All right, so Sunday we went to the Tobacco Valley Flywheeler Show. There wasn't a lot of people there on Sunday, but we had a lot of fun checking out the Friends of the Valley Railroad where they're working on trying to restore this uh, about three mile track, three mile section of track, which hasn't been used since 1982, which I thought was pretty cool. And back then, uh, part of the track washed out and no one's fixed it ever since, but it was really cool. It was pretty exciting and it had what's called engineered curves on it. The guy told me that trains used to run 55 miles an hour on this track and uh, it's pretty cool, so check it out. Yeah, we just took a ride on this Fairmount rail speeder. See this Fairmount engine down here? It's pretty cool. It's got the flywheels and everything. A little radiator. Some really cool, really cool little unit. Yeah, this thing is really, really cool. Yeah, it looks like it, huh? Yeah, that was a lot of fun, huh? Really cool. This one. see out the side here is actually the Connecticut River. It's a really beautiful spot. If you ever heard of the Essex steam train, those tracks are just south of this part of the tracks. And apparently a bridge got messed up between that, those tracks and here, which has made them kind of, you know, isolated. The part where we stopped here is the washout that officially closed the line and they want to build a box culvert there to fill it in is what he said. This used to be run by the New Haven Railroad back in the day and then Conrail took it over and then it's been vacant since 82. I don't know how these guys acquired it but that's the deal. And anyways the Fairmount rail car is pretty neat. In order to change directions they actually have to stop the engine and make it run backwards which is really cool. It can run both directions so the guy will kill the ignition and he tries to turn the ignition on just at the right time where he catches the flywheels and it can go the other direction. You've probably seen people do that with big engines like, uh, you know, uh, oil field engine type engines, a Reed engine or a big one like that, Patton Brothers, whatever, but not with a little engine like this. So it's pretty neat. So check it out. <laughs> backwards now. Engine's running the opposite direction. That's cool. We've got a belt drive down here. This is like a tensioner on a belt. And a brake and a throttle.
this engineered curve on film wasn't really successful but if you've ever been on a racetrack and it's banked in the corners that's the theory here on this engineered curve and the bank is really dramatic you can see it it's got to be at least two times the the height of the rail so it's probably six or eight inches and actually felt like the car was tipping over when you go over it if you ever driven in a race car um, you know, I've done the, the racing experience, whatever, at Dover, Delaware. And if you go out there and barely move, it feels like the car is going to flip over. Uh, we went out in a Conaline van, and I literally thought it was going to flip over. Then the guy floored it, did about 90 in the van, and it felt like you were on flat land. So that's the concept behind the track here. So when the trains are going 55 miles an hour, it made the curve smoother. The guy that was driving the car said that they actually wanted to remove the engineered curve so that when they use it for tourist sightseeing trains, they can have like a dinner excursion or something and your water won't spill out of your glass or whatever you want to call it. It'll be flat all the time.
Nice engine. I could be in a museum or something. They're so nice. Okay, this one's for sale, 2200. Here's some Gravely's for sale. It's got a commercial eight over here. It wants 250 bucks. I think that's a little high, personally, but that's what he wants. He's got that's some L's. 